I like this color. I like this logo. I think this image should be here. Guess what? As business owners, we are the least qualified to make design decisions about our website. Let's talk about what are examples of websites that have proven themselves to be high converting and findable. We're going to talk about that today. I think one of the most common questions I get is, what is a good website design? And today I'm going to walk you through four of our client websites and point out some of the features that I like to see in all the websites that we help customers to build. Now I plan the findability and then we work with strategic design partners to make sure that that findability and conversion is translated and converted over to a web design. So what you're seeing in front of you, of course, is my website. Now, the first thing you need to think about is how do you make a big splash here? Now, I get a lot of, of interesting uh, debate around whether those sliders are still relevant. Some people love the sliders, some people don't. Um, professional speakers and experts love the sliders. I love them because I can put big graphics, I can make a bold statement right as soon as they come to the website. And, but I know that I have to sacrifice pull time because if I pull this up on a smartphone, it's gonna take some time to pull those graphics. But I do love a slider. And if that's what you choose to do, that's perfectly fine. There's a lot of other ways. I'm gonna show you some other examples. Now let's go to this one. This is one of our clients called Academy LGBTQ. Now, what we chose to do on this one is put in a video of Joni, Stacy talking about her history with the LGBT community and her daughter who transitioned when she was in kindergarten. So great story. I highly suggest you visit this academy, lgbtq.com. But you'll notice we've got two what we call personality indicators. Who are you is really what we're saying. So when you come to the website, you'll see here, are you an organization? Are you a parent or caregiver? So it's important to make sure that those people feel like they are being addressed specifically, personally. A lot of times what we do as business owners is we like to talk in generics or we like to give them our resume. We've been in business for 23 years and here's how great we are and here's our testimonials. Here's how you can contact us. We call that the we, we show. We do this and we do that and we do this and no one cares because it's about me coming to the website. So as I come here, you can see I have four organizations for parents and caregivers. I've instantly connected with you as a visitor. You can decide which area is best for you. Now, as we come down, you'll see here that we've got what we call a content library. This is a big part of our SEO strategy as well, because as you click in these, there's more and more pages underneath them that are highly organized. But from a design example standpoint, this is a great way to put a bunch of information on the website in a very nice, neat manner. So everything's in its own place. We've got the basics, we've got for medical providers, mental health professionals, books and movies, and faith communities. So it's all right there. We call that the content library, which is a great way to get a bunch of data very quickly. Here you'll see we've got all of her blogs right there in the very front of the website. We have a scrolling series of testimonials. So I want to talk about testimonials for a minute. Testimonials, I think everyone, when I ask them, especially in my trainings, what do you know or think about testimonials is that A, their mother wrote them, or B, they wrote them themselves. So it's important to think about how do I get testimonials that have great credibility? My recommendation would be to have video, video of your clients talking about the work they've done with you. That's the best possible testimony that you can get. A lot of the written testimonials aren't really very interesting, and I think we automatically assume that they're made up. So be really mindful about how you use testimonials and what's the best way to really create trust and authority based on those testimonials. Okay, here's the next one. This is Greg Gregory and the website called teamsrock.com. Now, Teams Rock, you can see he's ex-military, and we got a lot of the blue, the navy blue, which is a high trust indicator, as well as yellow, which is a warm and friendly indicator. So you'll see here that he's a professional speaker, so of course his face is gonna be right on the front. You'll see that we have a very simple navigation right here at the top. This is the Wee Wee Show right here. We gotta have that, right? Here's what about Greg, and here's me speaking, and here's everything else, and, but you'll see here, this is how we've incorporated the findability. So that under teamwork in the workplace, when you click on that, you can see here that this is obviously teamwork in the workplace. 
But then you'll notice that underneath here, we have all of the relevant topics inside of that silo, we call them an SEO or pillar content. And you'll see here that as we go through the website, we've integrated the findability very nicely right on the homepage, right there. Then when we come down here, so these are credibility factors. And when you come in here and you see FBI and FDIC and all of these great US Army, it instantly gives them credibility as well as you can get a quick idea of who thinks he's awesome. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this is an intellectual property attorney. Now this is a little harder to make interesting. Now what Bill Honecker does is he goes and speaks at conferences and to CEOs about how to protect their intellectual property. So how do we make that interesting? Well, we knew that IP had the most amount of searches, over 100,000 searches per month. So we knew that people understood, but it's also IP address, intellectual property. We looked at as if you typed an IP into Google, it was all intellectual property. So we knew we were in the right lane on that one. So what we did is in order to make it more friendly, we added the word guy. He's your ipiguy.com. So that was domain is available. We get IP in the domain. Then what we did is we went to Logo Tournament, which is just for logo development. It's an auction model where people will get in there and sort of fight for your business. You upload a creative brief and then people start posting uh, logo ideas. So we ended up with that logo, IPI Guy, protecting brands, innovations, and technology, which is great. So have a good congruent logo with what your domain name is, is very important. We put the SEO right here in the main navigation. You'll see trademarks, copyrights and patents, trade secrets. All of those are the keywords that we're trying to rank for as well. All right, and then there's our blog. So then we chose to do a sweeping graphic. Now you'll notice here that it's not a banner that moves. It's just a still graphic. And then right there is his best video of him speaking. So right out of the gate, he's making a very strong statement about what he does and what he's an expert in. You don't have to question. He didn't make up any words. This is what he does. And then my final example is a comedian named Kay Francis. Now Kay had a really interesting problem. When you go here and you go to Google, then you type in Kay Francis. The problem with that is that Kay Francis was a silent screen star in the 1920s. So when you Google Kay Francis, you don't get my Kay Francis. Actually, actually you do get Kay Francis, sorry. <laughs> the very first one is Kay Francis. But before we started working with her, it was the dead silent movie star. And we've been able to over time optimize that website so now you see her and she's in first position you come down oh look we're seeing all of her videos now Woohoo! that's a big win for her so we're slowly taking over the page sorry k francis you're lovely but k francis the actual alive person celebrity gets to take over this page and that's because we really figured out that in a good website design it's a balance between look and content and especially in seo you want, don't want to sacrifice content for SEO text and you don't want to sacrifice SEO text for design. So make sure you're striking a balance. We've showed you some good examples of excellent website design. Make sure you post in the comments what is one of the design factors that you have on your website that makes it really convert for you. I'd love to hear the things that you've tried, both the ones that worked and maybe the ones that didn't work. So make sure to go in, check out these websites. Just to recap, we went to academylgbtq.com, teamswork.com, ipguy.com, and kfrancis.com. Have fun. Always be pushing toward better and more converting design because it pays off in the end.